Greetings, travelers. Greetings, travelers. It's the mighty Mark and Erica in 14 February. <laughs> I'm becoming operatic. I hope you I, hear I, that. I was about to say, you know, have you been training? Is that what's been going on? It's No, but funny, funny part of Erica history, my mom was an opera singer. Oh, wow. So yeah, that does that. Yeah, that means nothing at all for me, but my mom well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember it was an interview. One guy uh, at one time was asking, could I, was I a photographer? And I said, well, my uncle was. And he's like, well, what does that do with you? And I said, nothing, but I just thought it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, oh, my uh, gosh. We're getting near the end of 40 in February. We are. Two more we, episodes and we're done. We've done uh, a lot of monsters. We've done a lot of psychic. We've done some uh, witchy stuff. We've done a little bit of everything. We did. Gosh, we've we've done all the all the subjects. I I think though our friend X is a little let down because we've been a little light on one subject. That's true. And uh, Mark's going. And that's like his favorite. Off, so it's his favorite subject. So we met this wonderful individual at one of our appearances at one of our convention appearances uh back at the the mighty uh megacon i believe yes the and, mighty uh, megacon and this wonderful gentleman came up to us and told us his story and i was familiar with his story a little bit because i had seen a uh disclosed tv uh episode about it so i was like oh my gosh we've got to have this guy on the show uh, thankfully, he agreed to come on and tell us his side of things. So I am very happy. Uh, this man is an artist, a musician, and a super talent. And uh, and then he's also an experiencer. So we are going to talk about his experience. And without further ado, let's bring on the great Adam Hutton. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thank Welcome. you guys so much. Thank you very much. Um, wait, wait to lay out the red carpet. Yeah, that's <laughs> I appreciate a lot of build-up. Yeah, that was you awesome. Can't take a point now, because <laughs> wow, I, I, I do my best. Blushing? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Guys we want to make you feel welcome. Here. We want to make you feel welcome. So. I appreciate that. So let's talk a little bit about your history. Let's start there. How does that sound? Okay, I'm a Florida-born native. I've been here my whole life. Um, never really lived outside of the, like I guess a couple square miles from certain roads. Um, had a pretty normal childhood, got a brother, older brother, older sister. I'm the youngest of, th of three. Um, nothing really too crazy growing up or anything. Pretty, pretty average childhood, you know. Looking back as, a, as an adult and things I know now, those experiences and everything kind of makes a lot more sense. Like when, it, when things were happening at the moment, back when I was a kid, it never really... Um, made a lot of sense to me I never really thought too much of it you know um but nowadays it's like okay there's I'm seeing a lot of these weird coincidences like uh, there's a there's a timeline and there's things adding up to just like man that was weird how that happened and that led me to I guess research more of like universal synchronicities and um kind of I don't want to say it's destiny or anything like that because it seems like that's such a surface level of explaining it you know there's so much deeper rooted you know things that go into that so mm -hmm. um I didn't really get involved into a lot of this until my big main experience in 2012 which is what uh Disclosed TV um was one of the first people I ever reached out to as far as uh flat out plain as day all the experience you know having the the metal band uh was one way to express the story and experience without ridicule because it became theatrical and i can touch base on that in a little bit too yeah i know i know everyone's wanting to hear the juicy the juiciness no we we, we like the build up we like the build yeah. up. <laughs> total build up because you have okay such an amazing story so we get a lot of listener tales for people who experience things and mm. tell us of their experience but yours has so many more it's like a parfait 
as often. Yeah, there's, 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 there's layers here. There's <laughs> layers. Like an onion. <laughs> yeah, like an onion. Like an onion. I, I, I like parfait better, so I'm going to, because everybody loves parfait. I'm allergic so, to onions. So, oh, there but, you go, uh, yeah. So, so no onions. Oh, I got you. No onions. But uh, yeah, no onions and garlic for me, please. Uh, Allium allergies are a real thing. Uh, but no, Absolutely. let's let's go back. All right, so you're talking about synchronicities, right? Things that have you know that happen and then it's like wait all right well then why did this happen well oh it happened and this happened at the same time mm -hmm. and we love that stuff because that's when, when when we're digging into things and i suddenly discover oh man you know this this happened here so let's talk a little bit about that before we get into the big the big event what was the first one you kind of noticed the big one right off the bat was i mean obviously my birthday is 11 11 um, so right off the rip, I'm snake eyed Scorpio or whatever, anything, you know, depending on what you believe. So that was just right off the rip. That was like, okay, that was, that's something a lot of, I've already had seeing, you know, numbers and, you know, repetition of patterns show up, whether it be numerical or artistically. Uh, the biggest one that ever stood out to me now and looking back was the passing of my father. He had passed away a month before my son was born and my son was born on my father's birthday which is 12, 29, 2014 to, to go to the year. So, so it's weird, like having that like reminder, you know, soul for a soul kind of thing, the, the transfer over, right. The grieving process mixed with having, a, you know, a child, you know, it was just such, such a weird, like, okay, maybe that was kind of meant to happen, you know, for one of the most difficult things in my life, but one of the most beautiful things coming out of it. So it was, that's, that's one of the big, coincidental things and then there's other trickling web things that i guess come from that um but that one is the mo monumental coincidental like that i, I look back on awesome wow. sorry oh. a little shaky too i don't know if it's the coffee or it's, i get i get a little worked up talking about it oh uh, no. yeah <laughs> trust me so do i i get really freaked out so you're good don't worry okay. <laughs> you're you're among friends here so awesome and no judgments no 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 nothing so we and we have all the how many people tell us now we know this sounds crazy but you know and that's we're like yeah we understand we, but we believe you that's why we're here right. we want i have no know. reason to i mean death records are there the birth record certificates yeah, are there so exactly. it's not like it's not exactly. like i can really make up that stuff i you know this is my mug that my daughter got me my you know other kid uh, yeah so it's like uh, that's my whole persona I, everyone knew like I was the dad in my group. I was the first of our friends to have kids. Everyone knew my father. It was, that's why I go by Dadum, you know, for Dadum Designs and, and everyone just calls me dad now because, you know, nicknames get shortened and everyone makes their, their things up. So <laughs> it just kind of stuck. That's a good one. I like it. Very so, cool. all right. So you've had some unusual things happening throughout your life. Just little, little segments like that. And then let's let's go ahead and go to 2012 and let's tell everybody uh, about that day. I guess you can kind of say it started, you know, where I wound up in that position. I would I would have to start a little bit before that to kind of paint a foundation. Yeah. Um, I had recently just lost my job. Uh, it was I was uh, living in an apartment with my fiance at the time. And that apartment was also. um being rented to me by my boss. So it was like a kind of a monopoly in a way. Like oh, wow. I, I lost my job and my place because I couldn't afford my place because I lost my job. And so we wound up moving in with her uh, parents and I was young, I was dumb, just right, you know, wanted to take advantage of the fact that I didn't have a job and breathe for a little bit, you know, and I, I, I kind of, you know, just wasn't really focusing on money and, you know, I was, I was slipping. So me and my buddy, we, we just were ri out riding our bikes. Like, you know, we would ride along the uh, Pinellas County Trail um, up and down. And we would, I guess, for a reason to do it, we would call ourselves chemtrail hunters because we would go out and take pictures of the sky. And there was a lot of these weird aerial phenomena that were happening around this time, um, whether it be chemtrails casting shadows in the wrong direction of the sun um you know kembo showing up in really weird places just a lot of i mean we're already getting dumped from all the chemtrail stuff and that's a whole different story but with with florida being a ufo hotspot and i mean not knowing this until later on 
Um, it makes just a lot more sense. You know, McDill Air Force Base, you got, you got, you got a lot of, of sightings, whether or not they're legitimized or, you know, either way. So we just decided to, to take pictures. We would post them on our Instagram, you know, get connected with a lot of the, the chemtrail community. And of course, that came with a lot of the, the tinfoil hat people. You know, you, you get a lot of interesting things, and um, which is OK. You know, that's 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 how that's to be expected. Um, and, and that was before we even really dug down the rabbit hole, getting into, you know, the aliens and and uh government cover-ups black budget projects real quick we'll pause for a second and we'll talk okay. about you know mcdill and the hot spots i mean that's one of my areas of expertise i was in st petersburg for a long time uh about 30 years mm. and mcdill was known to be uh, a testing ground right it's not right. area 51 it's not out there but when they were at that next step they would bring the planes over to mcdill before they would go and deploy them all over the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at CENTCOM, their national headquarters is there, uh, amongst other right. things. Yeah, because I thought a lot of that stuff from Area 51, A, would come down to McDill, and then they'd go right up to Ohio. And yeah, they go right up to Wright Pat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Wright, Wright Pat or McDill, yeah. those are the three. And then Area 51, mm -hmm. that's the three, you know, major locations. And um, there were reports of, you know, some Deltas, which are, you know, the flying wings that we – still don't know if they really do exist or not right uh, and and some of these other things so mcdill yeah has a lot of strange stuff in the sky there is beautiful because it's tampa bay you've got the gulf stream you've got the jet mm -hmm. stream you've got all that mixing so we get a lot of really cool weather phenomena and that's why it's the lightning capital of the world amongst other things so it's the perfect area for this stuff it's a breeze absolutely so all right and so you're you're traveling, you're taking pictures. Yeah, just ride, riding our bikes, being, you know, 18, 19, 20. It was around that time. I can't even remember. I, I could figure out my age doing the math, but, you know, that's one That's one extra step. <laughs> I totally do. So we, we had ridden along the Pinellas County Trail, heading, I guess, south, southeast. And uh, we come across Seminole Boulevard, which is where the experience happened. And we come across this murder of crows. And it's nothing I've really ever seen. I've, I mean, I've seen birds down here before they migrate, you know, we're, we're the South and, you know, a lot of, a lot of other different types of birds and species and parrots and things like that. But this wasn't necessarily them flocking. It wasn't like they, you could see them flowing in one direction. They were, they, you know, they were sporadic and it, they were all over the place. It was, it was wild. It seemed like it was, it wasn't even real. Like we, I, I, so I remember just taking out my phone and just filming it. Just, and that's where the footage came from. And as we're filming it, um, I just remember just like giggling. And then it felt like water was dripping on us. Like we felt wet. So consciously I'm like, okay, maybe it was bird poop. Maybe these crows are everywhere. You know, they're lined up down the power lines They're there. You can zoom in in the video where I do zoom in and you could just see it's it's just clutters of them they're just everywhere they're, they're not flocking there's just in my personal opinion i i believe that something was affecting the geomagnetic atmosphere it's causing you know a lot of this just just them to just scatter you know then that's been in sci-fi movies now i don't know if that's preconditioning for a lot of the things that people witness when it comes to birds and things like that uh, or if it's supernatural, I know we live in Florida. It's there's a lot of Indian burial grounds. I don't know if there's something that's hidden or being covered up in a certain way. You know, there's the, all those theories and everything. But in the video, as you can see, it's it's all raw. I haven't. This was before I got into video editing, and so the, the, you know, I, I can't really have someone be like, "Oh, well, he edited the video." Well, there's no way I could have. I, I posted it before. I was able to even get into that kind of thing and my phone became corrupt about two days after this happened and it was a brand new htc you know my my uh ex-fiance's mom had purchased it for me because i lost my job so she was trying to get me you know back on the in the groove so i'm it's a nice camera that's why i was going out taking pictures of the sky and you know just but the reason for that and so it, that's it, it was corrupted like two days after she was so pissed at me i remember just her being really, really upset. I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't really do anything wrong. I don't know. I've never seen a phone really corrupt that way. Like the file couldn't, you know, open. So I didn't have the original file, but I was able to save it 
the original file to my computer before the corruption happened. So I still have that original raw file. As I said, we felt water. I, I remember getting struck with this, like the stiff, like hit to my stomach, to my chest. It's really hard to explain. It was, it was like for like, you know how before you throw up, you can get that salvation, you know, you can kind of be like, Oh, Oh, it's coming. There was no, there was no pre-warning signs. It hit like, like it was like a beam, you know? And I, and I, I, I stress beam because I know there's now, obviously in the, now that I've look back and like, wow, there's electromagnetic beams that they can do that can cause your heart to fail and cause your stomach. You know, there's pulses that can radiate out of these towers. You know, it's things that coincidental was it was it the 5g tower that was affecting the geomagnetic atmosphere was it the thing in the clouds that made the video skip you can hear the audio clip and then it it's like minutes went by or like even longer time went by because the sun's down even further the crows are gone you know and we're i'm looking over at him we're both throwing up and i'm I'm going in and out of this uh, the hit of throwing up trying to trying to hold my camera up because i i don't know why i'm throwing up you know it's it was i it was like a, at that time, you know, zombies were really big in the pop culture. So in my head, I'm like creating these scenarios of like what's going on. I'm trying to trying to get back out of it. I can. He's throwing up, and I don't even know why he's throwing up. So I, I was I I don't know what was really going on. It happened within that span of the of the footage, which is only if I remember like seven eight minutes long, you know. And most of that's us just freaking out about the crows, and then it cuts me off. I said, dude, we're getting, and then I, I just, it just vomit like profusely. Like, so this is where it gets really, really interesting because this was the most ridicule I've gotten for the specific part. The parasites. And I want to say a parasite because that's the best way I can explain it. The feeling of it crawling in and out of your your like nasal cavity and you, uh, like underneath your teeth, ah, the back of the jaw. Oh, it, oh. it was it was it, it would go down the neck, and I'm shaking thinking about it. I got chills. This this is yeah. Oh, I have other feelings right now. You want to talk about vomiting? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Ah, <laughs> no, 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 um, hey, no. That's this, what we want. This is, this is still 12 21 2012. Coincidentally, right. the day the Mayan calendar ended. Yeah, right. So. Yeah there's i don't know what that if that is linked to anything um it just goes back to that universal synchronicity was this was there a reason for all those chemtrails in the sky what were they covering was there something beyond the sky you know and it wasn't until someone had brought up the 5g tower in the background or the radio tower that yeah. I started thinking about that and then i went down that rabbit hole but to stay on topic along you know i'm, I'm sorry i guess this is all on topic but yeah, yeah. um there was, there was, it was blacking out in and out of, of vomiting. You know, you can hear, you can hear my friend throwing up. And as I'm coming to like, finally, like spitting out the shit in my mouth, <laughs> you know, um, I, I obviously, I checked myself. We're not covered in any bird poop. We're not wet. Like we had presumed we thought we were like, I, in my head, I'm like, okay, maybe it was a bird flu, something we got instantly sick. You know, it was in the air but I'm fine now. And I look over to my friend, um, and we're currently no longer friends. This was a de- over a decade ago, but, uh, I, I, his, his story is just as wild. I mean, he went to the hospital, found his parasite, broke it on the roof of his mouth with his thumbnail, instantly started vomiting as his body reaction to, I guess, this Whatever. biological like thing that's in our body. So that was his experience when he finally broke his, and that was months later because it kept affecting him and Mm. we could just we could feel it going in and out of our teeth in this first experience that was all I really ever experienced was it going in and out of my teeth you know that that and I remember looking over to him and he and you see in the video he's just like dude it's still doing it like I and that's weird because I didn't even ask what is it doing because I knew what it was doing right you know I could feel it too and I'm like dude we just we got to get off this bridge. We got to, we got we to gotta run. I don't really, I couldn't understand what was going on. You know, it was, it was very, very, very scary, you yeah. know, especially to have both of us happen at the same time to have the glitches in the video that I can't remember. Like if that, what had happened with the audio clipping, because time is 
is irrelevant and I just can they stop time it's, it's just so many yeah. questions that I have but how did they get this inside my body is basically the main question and and why can't I remember it so that was that experience this missing time is so common in all of this and <laughs> to, we, we hear it all the time but for and them then, to be able to edit the video like that if that was the case an eight yeah. minute solid long one take well, video and then yeah. and, and halfway through it or in that mark where you can hear it and you can even see the glitching like of the camera stop the audio cuts yeah. for like a second and then and then i i put the camera back up to the sky and there's nothing there's yeah. there's, there's like very small amount of crows like it like it was yeah. like oh it's come and gone the sun's way lower you know i go home no, i freak out I, I i lose my shit I, I mean, my fiance is already kind of freaking out on me because I lost my job. So, you know, I'm like, shit, how do I t explain this to her? My buddy went home. He's, he's still losing it. You know, he, he didn't yeah. know what the hell happened. We didn't text each other. It was like, it was like, well, we got to go home and, um, and just decompress what just happened because we got to figure out it out. Oh, my gosh. First of all, I'm just reeling. So that's what's happening. But we have to take a break. And I can't believe I have to say that at this point, because it's like, oh, uh, no, no, this is, this what is happens exactly next? where we need to take the break. <laughs> that is so, that, that is pretty much the premise of the first main experience debuting in the 12, 21, 2012. OK, OK. All right. So well, we will be right back. Ladies all right. And, gentlemen. and so listen to those sponsors. Take yourself a nice little break yourself. And we will be right back. I know I need a breath. <laughs> the sweltering heat of the Florida sun breaks as a chill runs down your spine. A dark shadow looms from a nearby tourist trap. You didn't expect to find this kind of shade in Florida. If only there was some sort of travel guide to steer you through the spookier locales. You're in luck, reader. Join author Mark Muncie and Carrie Schultz as they lead you through the darkest locations in the Sunshine State in creepy Florida, available from History Press and at fine bookstores everywhere. Prepare to be devoured. The Wolves of Wharton is a six-part complete book series by Erie Travels producer Bo Lake. It has been called dark and visceral, steamy, dramatic, and a fresh take on the werewolf mythos. If you like action, adventure, a large serving of body horror, and some steamy relations, the Wolves of Wharton series is for you. Pick it up wherever books are sold or at linktree.com slash bow underscore underscore lake. We're back, and yeah. I'm thoroughly freaked out and never going to sleep again. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, welcome that. to welcome to my life. <laughs> yes, okay. Erica, we you know we are down the rabbit hole. So I know, and you did this on purpose. So just I, I purposely did not warn you about this one. So I know I'm well, very well aware of that. While we're down the rabbit hole, get your mining light and your shovel ready because it's about to get a lot creepier. Oh, great. Great. <laughs> great. That, oh, oh man. I love that, Adam. Thank you so much. So, all right. Well, let's dig. We'll put the canary in. Uh, all right. He looks good. So let's go. <laughs> all right. So uh, it's just to, I guess, reiterate on the last ending of the first experience. I had went home, freaked out to my fiance, you know, showed her exactly where I felt these things. And of course, looked out like I was crazy. Um, she had left me five days later, the day after Christmas. Oh. So I was basically homeless. Uh, I was able to kind of crash on my sister's couch and, you know, couch hop a little bit. Uh, so homeless, no job, no fiance, I lost it, everything. Um, you know, ground zero, they, they say you can, you know, it's the best place to build yourself back up. But uh, in 2012, I was naive. It was two years after I graduated high school. You know, I'm 19, 20. So now I finally have an idea of my age. Uh, <laughs> You know, just sitting on my, crashing on my sister's couch, eating ramen, you know, trying to think of what to do with my life, you know, what to, like, this, I wouldn't even think it about the, the experience that had just happened. I'm so heartbroken over, you know, the losing, you know, her kicking me out, 
like that kind of stuff because I wasn't pulling my weight. Now I'm losing it, you know, that kind of thing. So I find I go and put in applications at a, at uh, at jobs and I'm still riding bikes with my buddy trying to figure out what's going on. And uh, we take our bikes to the same overpass in, in Seminole, Florida, um, right on Seminole Boulevard. You, can, you know, everyone could look it up uh, if, if they want to, uh, where the Pinellas County Trail meets the uh, Seminole Boulevard. It's uh, nothing out of the ordinary. It was it was another average normal day. So we rode until about sunset, you know, keep kept continuing down Pinellas County Trail, heading towards Tyrone area and Tyrone Mall and uh like kind of like bay pines we get to the overpass at the intersection of park street and bay pines tyrone area and so we're sitting up there on this bike overpass just looking at traffic and you know it's getting it's getting to be obviously twilight time that sun's you know already peaked down still a little auburn out and it hits me i feel it crawling around where like my belly button is something and it's it was it I was screaming screaming like as loud as I could it was the one time my buddy didn't bring his pocket knife with me with him or else I would have cut it out myself I was so terrified that it was part of my Australian but it was going down for my dick you know it was it was going down there and I was freaking out I mean this that's that's the bread and butter. I, you know, I, I, I can't lose that. So it was, it was grabbing it, forcing everything in my stomach to try to push this thing back up. I could feel it crawling in and out of my rib cage. Eventually, I finally catch it in, in the grip of my index finger and my thumb, and I pinch as hard as I can. And whether or not I was hope, I was really hoping to just rip through my skin to just rip this thing out. Like, and just the pain of just forcing the adrenaline's pumping. I, I wanted this thing out. He's freaking out. There was, I guess, a pedestrian or someone driving by that had heard me screaming and called 911. She had parked her little car thing off the side and ran up the this little stairwell that gets you to the overpass area where the you know crosswalk is and everything. She comes up freaking out and I'm just sitting there like, like, oh my god, I'm shaking. I'm still shaking now, just thinking about it. And she's asking if everything's okay. She's telling us she called the ambulance. I'm, I'm like in my head. I'm like. I'm going to go to a mental institution. She's not going to understand this. They're not going to get it. Like, how am I going to, like, everything is just flooding in my head. It was just instant fear of, you know, you're going to get locked away. You're, you know, you're, you're homeless. They, they, they don't know this. They, you know, they're going to see this as you're crazy, you know? Uh, so I fled, I, I ran, uh, well, not ran, but on my bike, <laughs> me and him booked it before the ambulance showed up. Never seen this girl before in my life. So I had this, these bruises and everything where I was trying to pinch this out and and uh it's crazy because I still feel it like I, it's still sore for some reason even a decade later I can still feel exactly where the one piece is because the other piece it broke is it, the other broken off piece is kind of under the rib cage a little bit you know it's it's uh it's not solid it, it's it's biological so the way it blends in with my skin is it, it's like it, it's part of my anatomy you know um but it's not, (laughs) it's really not. Uh, I don't know if the nightmares stemmed from it, if there's something, if it was some sort of like, I don't want to say tracking device, but I, I've always wondered, was it there to help me or hurt me? Um, And now I, I, looking back, it's like, man, I've dodged so many times I could have died. Like I was told I had pancreatitis you know, the pre-diabetes, all this other weird stuff, which falls into this, the rest of this second experience. I was applying to jobs around that time. You know, it was, it was shortly after she had left me, this girl, the parasite, trying to get it out of my rib cage. I, uh, I applied at a Moe's Southwest Grill, just as, you know, line cook or whatever, just trying to make some money. And uh, I go in and, and it's the same girl that called the ambulance. What? Out of all the play, it's just another coincidence. I'm like, okay, and she's pale white. She is she like she saw a dead person or something. She's and and I didn't really figure out that because I was like, man, she looks really familiar. You know, this is only like a week after, a week or two after this has happened. Yeah. So she's like, it, nothing really happened there, but, but 
like right off the wrap and I, I started working there and then she finally confronted me like were you on the overpass and da 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 and so, yeah you know she was like I'm the one who called the ambulance you know, I'm like, oh my God, you actually were there for that experience. You were a witness to this. You know, this is, this is, it's got even realer now. Like it wasn't just a, a random stranger, you know, now I'm able to ask her questions and cause I'm, I was panicking and you know, what did I say Th this and that, you know, and she concreted the, the situation, you know, she was like, you did this, you were reaching for this, like you were grabbing that saying something was, was squirming around in your stomach. And, and I was like, okay, so I wasn't just, you know, a delusion or anything like that. I mean, I already had my friend there and it was just more, I guess, reassurance that this had really happened. And she actually did call the ambulance. They showed up. She told me what happened afterwards. She told him she explained what had happened. So I'm single. There's a girl who just happened to be there. <laughs> Coincidentally, we start dating. Wow. I don't want to talk anything bad about her. She, she, she had, you know, a lot going on with her life. She had recently just become homeless as well. So it was weird. We like, get, and, and, and we, we, you know, we're, we're still homeless, sleeping out of her car and trying to make up some money at Moe's to, to get a little apartment together and all that. <clears throat> and in the process, I think it was about a month, you know, of just couch hopping for my sisters with her and her finding other places to stay. And we get in three car accidents. Whoa. I've never been in, I've barely been in one in my life. I've been in three in a span of, of, of 30 days, a little over 30 days that we were together. The third one, I mean, the first two little fender bender action, you know, don't call the insurance. We don't have it. That kind of thing. It's Florida. That happens all the time. The third one, we're on our way to work. Uh, we had left my sister's apartment and we're driving down East Bay, heading westbound. And someone just pulls out right in front of us and we t-bone them i wasn't driving i was the passenger we we're in a little honda one that has the automatic seat belts oh. so I, I relied only on the automatic seat belt i didn't put my lap belt on oh. so we're going about 40 miles an hour we t-bone uh what i remember as a lady at that point because i was i was like oh shit you know like slow down i put my legs up of course instant reaction i have no lap belt on so my my knees hit my chest mm. uh in the collision i saw white i went completely white like everything instead of like people say they black out this is more white i remember coming to seeing some guy right on the like the median freaking out like oh my god i just saw that that was crazy you know it was so i remember little bits and pieces getting out we t-boned a nun oh wow what? yes a nun um who i finally got her out of the car she was uninjured thankfully even though we t-boned the driver's side you mm. know I, I'm, I'm still in pain. I had trauma to my pancreas. I didn't go to the hospital because you, you, you're allowed like two weeks before you can claim, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I was trying to really like push it off and I hate hospitals. They, they've never been fun. Um, so I, I always usually try to avoid them. And, but I had to go, like, I couldn't put my arms over my head. I, I was, um, I had black stool. I, I, I was, so it was like, I got to go to the hospital. Something internal is damaged. That brings up the x-rays. Yeah. So wow. I was, they said that I had trauma to the pancreas, which is in a different spot of where this is, you know, where I broke the parasite. I get the x-rays back and I find it. I see it in two pieces right where I broke it. And these two shadowy just formulations of what it would look like if you took a leech and pinched it so hard it snapped in half that's the best way i could explain it too is when i think of parasite i think of a leech like it's just something that latches in i mean even though parasites take control but it it was the best way i can really describe how it felt when it traveled in and out of my fucking rib cage like it was just it felt like a tiny worm like a, a slug and so that's where the x-rays came in and that just validated more of of that this is real you know, this, wow, it's right there. Me and her wound up not working out. Obviously, with three car accidents with one girl, you're kind of like, all right, God, you're telling me something, you know, like. <laughs> I get the message. Yeah, yes. yeah. You know, even though I'm not really heavenly, you know, biblical or anything like that, it's it's a good guideline, yeah. you know, and I'm sure we all have an overseer. So that led to the x-rays and it also led to <laughs> me meeting someone in the radiology team. Uh, wow. who, had ex who had now I, I am engaged to we have two kids yeah. together the third one on the way and 
Congratulations. Um, thanks. Just another coincidence, though. Like, yeah. it, it, she told me in the radiology team, they said they've never seen anything like that before in the human anatomy. You know, uh, that, that was another more reassurance of like, cool, so I have a foreign object now. And so I start researching, you know, how to get these removed. Apparently, there was a doctor who did remove these kind of foreign alien objects out of people's uh, anatomy. And I guess he's, he's currently deceased now so yeah. it's like he's there the goes with, uh derek sims is uh, or daryl sims he's the guy with the cowboy hat you always see mm -hmm. on some of the ufo documentaries he had a device taken out of his arm that was pretty crazy so. yeah I'm, I'm hoping one day i can i can either a work up the courage or get some sort of re-x-ray done or ultrasound to get some more visual idea i'm actually thinking because we have an ultrasound thing coming up for the baby on the way oh uh, it's kind of grabbing it over there and just you know oh, hey, lather me up <laughs> but uh i don't know if the ultrasound radiation or whatever that is will affect it uh, you know it's which yeah. it's just it's wild uh, like surviving the car accident was one thing surviving the pancreatitis when the doctor said i was going to be dead if i keep doing this if i keep eating you know red meat you know I walked out of the hospital. Like I walked out of the ER once he told me that, and I never really went back for this, uh, for, for any of that car accident related stuff. Um, you know, I, I found out I had a new girlfriend, you know, we were still working things out. We had gotten an apartment together and that's when more things started getting weird. Uh, shoes were around the house in different places when we woke up. I mean, our, we were living in a tiny ap apartment complex um, right off of Walsingham and in, in, in Largo or Seminole area. And more experiences kept happening. Um, aside from the, the shoes being moved around the house, being one particular thing, I don't know if something's messing with us, whether it be a supernatural ghost or if this is still connected to my experience uh, until the night she told me she had a nightmare that she got pulled into the sky so hard that it broke her spine. And she felt like if she got pulled up so bad that she, she, she knew what she was feeling and she woke up out of it. And, you know, we, she explained it and I was like, that's crazy. You know, I kind of had a similar experience of a nightmare with eight shadowy figures around the room, but I was in sleep paralysis kind of format. So we both are sharing these, these experiences. And this is right before, you know, she, she gets pregnant and before my dad passes and uh, my dad, you know, obviously passed a month before my first child was born and my son was born, being born on my dad's birthday a month later, more reassurance going into what my wait, father wait, said. Your son was born on your dad's birthday. That's correct. Yeah. He said that earlier and it was mm -hmm. perfect I, passing of the torch here. I yeah. know there's just the soul for there soul. Is so much for me. I know it's it's I feel like I, I I'm keep... gonna have to listen to this episode about 10 times to absorb everything that's happening like the best title for this episode is coincidence or universal synchronicity <laughs> like because this is it all stems from did this really happen is that is that the, the way it's laid out my dad telling me about the purple lights that used to visit him when he was a kid his father being in the air force you know just other little elements that i'm you know figuring out so you know going down the trail it's following yeah. the family you know, you know i never met my grandparents i know my dad witnesses his mom die in a car accident and you know it's, it's a trail of, of trauma i guess that's kind of like went down the hereditary way too um but with with him passing that was that was that was so crazy because it was right after that one experience of you know the uh with her having getting pulled into the sky and that's when I was able to talk to my dad he had, he had died from cancer well I guess he didn't die from the cancer he died from the hospital um yeah. an infection in his kidneys due to his catheter uh, so oh wow like I said I don't like hospitals <laughs> so and of course my son was born in the same hospital my dad died in a floor above him so it was really oh. tough like going back to the same hospital, see my son get born and walk through the same halls. It's just, it's eerie even thinking about it, but after the purple lights, that was, that was when I was like, and he, cause he told me, he was like, I believe you, you know, I, and that was all the assurance I needed, you know, it was him it and his, and his last, yeah, it was like, holy shit. You know, that's all, I don't, I don't even know, that, like, I could die happy. That's just like, cool, my dad knows, and he, like, he, he might not even believe all of what happened. It was just the fact that he gave me that, I believe you. And that was, that was that golden ticket of me, like, 
you know what, then I need to tell this, you know, then yeah. I need to get this out and not worry about the ridicule. Um, I've always worried about it affecting my family in any way, of course. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to really balance the, to be like, uh, this is, this is real. This is very real, yeah. but you know, but it's still up for your interpretation. You know, it's, 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 I can give you all of what happened and, you know, that's, that's it. I don't have all of the knowledge. I don't have my, the main truth of what really happened. This is just, this is just my puzzle and I'm trying to piece it together, you know? And, and that's, that's what this is all about is, you know, this is things we don't understand yet. This is, yeah. stuff we hope someday we do. And um, I think definitely, you know, you've got a lot to unpack here, you mm. know, and um, I'm looking into regression therapy uh, uh, to see if I can dig a little deeper into my subconscious and, and figure out if there was anything that was trapped there. Um, I, that's a scary, that's just a scary phrase to even say, to be honest, because I, I am absolutely terrified of what I'm going to find, you know, or what is going to come to light in, in that aspect. I've heard, you know, the hypnosis and bringing up, you know, suppressed dreams or experiences and see where I can get that time back. Yeah. of of what happened because because i have very vivid dreams i have vivid dreams of them being this up close to me where i could see the texture on their foreheads i see it it's like it's like if you were looking at the moon through binoculars that's how the texture of, of their face was and their eyes were so sunken in that it, it was it was it was a vast void like it, like there was no there was no shine of a of an eyelid or anything like that it was deep but it, it seemed like that 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 wasn't it that was like that like it was wearing some sort of bio suit that like to look like that you know what i mean it, yeah. it was i i mean i'm really jumping into this because i didn't really walk into go. it i'm sorry it was one of my nightmares go. Feet first. Feet first. Yeah, it was, it, it was right. one of those nightmares when i was in that in the same apartment and I, to touch back on hers of getting pulled up into the sky that same morning before she went into the shower i had noticed she had a mark on her uh on her butt cheek so i kind of looked over to it and you know let's see if i can draw it really quick three dots yeah. sorry three yeah. dots wow. that formed a triangle like kind of like a pr the predator's little three vision laser yeah. thing i'd say that but the it, it, she said oh, yeah. there was no pain there wasn't it, it was perfect circles like it burnt the very first layer of her skin you know but it wasn't to where she had felt it or anything like that but i was like those you know they're not indentions where she sat on anything because she's fresh out of bed you know, she still has the little creases in her body, you know, the, yeah. the little sleepy face when you sleep on your blankets or whatever. So I was like, okay, so it wasn't that. I'm like, what the hell is going on? At the same night, she had this dream and he pulled into the sky almost days later after I had my experience, you know, with the, the figures in the room, the stuff moving around the house. It was just everything. And then this, like getting marked while she's pregnant, scary stuff. Yeah. scary stuff for being a, for, for, for a soon-to-be parent i was and you can't really explain this to her because she's pregnant no. i don't want to yeah, add any yeah, stress to her yeah. in, in my head i'm like man i don't know what to do so i just kind of we we shrugged it off you know it was like well uh we'll see what happens you know we'll keep locking our doors i guess but that's when she started getting really scared and then the more i dug into it the more i started to realize that it was consuming me and i wasn't focused on being a dad so that's, that's slowly when I, when I started to, to bury it. And now my son is nine years old. He's showed really crazy signs of intelligence. He's uh, in the gifted program. He builds programs and roadblocks and levels. And I mean, I mean, I don't know if that's what kids are supposed to do these days, but that's awesome. You know, it's his programming, he's straight A student. So I, I can't be, I can't complain. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy how everything happens. I, I feel like through this experience something has been always kind of lurking over my shoulder whether it be a good or bad thing it's kept me alive so I don't know if even on even when I'm like shit I should have died like you know not only just that moment but you know especially the three suicide attempts like that was that was when I was like okay for a second I'm sorry I don't I don't mean to say the s word I don't know if we're allowed to on here That's or not sorry. Totally say I, the I apologize I know that gets really real uh but that that is very real like no. I I struggled. I was, you know, just like Rightly anybody so. else. Yeah. There's no judgment here. That that sounds like you've been through hell and back, literally. And yeah. uh, and the fact that you've built yourself up is just so impressive. Thank you. Uh, to me.
I can only imagine. I, I just I want to chime in one quick little synchronicity there. 2012 Park Boulevard or Park Street and mm. Tyrone. Uh, I ran the GameStop right there at that no time. No way. That was when I was the. I know exactly. What you're I'm pretty sure we were going there. Honestly, it was, it was probably, in that Walmart probably, area. Like... I probably uh, helped you pre-order games. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I, well, we never made it because <laughs> the, yeah. the the parasite happened. So that, I yeah. I can't remember what our real intention was because it was sunset. We couldn't take pictures of the chemtrails at that moment. Yeah. You know, we were sky hunters. We were trying to just take pictures of anomalies. And then well, I guess maybe that was what was our plan. That was... <laughs> Yeah. Or maybe his intention. Um, I don't know if he took leave. That area him. was where you know the fighters and stuff from McDill would fly over mm. to head out to the Gulf. Uh, usually, when they were on their way to Eglin up in um, uh, Pensacola and stuff like that, they would fly right over that area so they could go out and then they could break the sound barrier once they got off off the yeah. Gulf Coast and stuff. Um, you, we always hear those booms, like even yeah. off the echo and off. It's a crazy place. Uh, Tampa St. Pete uh, is known as the Tampa Triangle because it has so much weird phenomena. Uh, again, native burial grounds were destroyed, paved over that whole area right there. That Park Boulevard area, there's the mound just a little bit further down. Sacred Lands uh, is right there. But that's also where Navarez came in and wiped out you know, all the people. And, and I left this information out. My dad is also Blackfoot Indian. Oh, wow. So you've got so... that. I have part of that in me. My mom's Italian or whatever she is. <laughs> it's weird because I was the only dark skin, tan skin, like in my family. My my sister is blonde. My my brother's blonde, blue eyed. Like I was, I was the black sheep, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it's crazy because my brother never had experiences like this until and he lives out in Colorado. Oh well, there you Coincidentally go. Coincidentally enough, now spot. he's starting to experience some things. That's some know? people. He may have just blocked it out. He may have had experiences and forgot about. It. And like you said, you didn't realize this when you were a kid, but now you're mm -hmm. looking back and you start going, "Oh wait, some other things happened." Yeah, my veil was torn a lot earlier than his was. Like yeah. I was able to see beyond the curtain. I guess in in an, an analogy, to better put it, you know, kind of see through the bullshit of society's blindfold. So, um. He did. He finally caught on as he grew up. You know, he's he's only like two years older than me, but he was always like the the you know, the mm. older brother brother set an example. I'm gonna protect protect my younger brother by kind of being and you know, yeah, mean in a, in a way. You know, it was it was he, he would he would do it that way. And it wasn't until it wasn't until our dad passed that he was finally opening up to things. And he had done his experiments, I guess, out there. He has his own experiences, so like with ayahuasca and, and different hallucinogens and things like that to kind of to talk to dad, you know, I guess the best yeah. way to put it. I don't I don't want to say that him listen to this and him be like, damn it, Adam, or, you know, yeah, something that's... like that. Yeah. No, but, judgments. Uh, no judgments. You know, yeah, like we 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 did we all did what we could to really get our closure because I, I could not grieve. I was about to be a dad, so I, I had to stay strong for her. So my grieving process was pushed down and it wasn't until years later that I had my my meltdown my you know good cry as they cut like like to call it um and it still hits every once in a while I mean you never really you never really get over losing your parents it's it's more or less uh you get numb to it you know yeah. and as being a dad myself I, I you know it's just like man I I gotta stick around you know I had my kids young whereas my dad was older um I want I wanted to I want to grow up uh, grow up with them and not grow old now, with all this said, we, I'm sure we can keep going, yeah, and yeah. discussing many more things. But um, now, one of the things I thought was fascinating is, like I said, you felt like you couldn't just come out and talk about this stuff because mm -hmm. people look at you funny. You know, you go to the family reunions and they go, mm, "Oh, there's crazy Uncle Joe." I get, well, there's creepy Mark, uh, mm -hmm. our, our eerie Florida Mark over there. You came up with a very cool way to discuss this stuff and to get it out there. You've got a band. Yeah. So let's let's talk about just a little bit of that okay. uh, before we wrap up. The band started a couple of years after, around 2014, 2015. Uh, met up with a group of, uh, I started with a drummer that I've known since he was in diapers. Uh, we grew up hunting together, which there's other experiences I can go into with the hunting stuff because, you know. That's for for another episode if you guys still want. We'll see you. <laughs> we're we're we'll definitely see how having the critics you back. Say, you know, we're definitely having you back. So. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But uh, yeah, the band. It was. It wasn't even really. I kind of tiptoed into 
like getting into the alien thing and, and sharing my experience because I didn't want to shoo them away, you know, or scare them away. They were fresh out of high school, a um, little bit younger. So they had bright minds ready to rock, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I saw potential in them. I was a lot older, you know, I've been in and out of bands as well. So I took, you know, kind of a leadership role with them and got them going with, with their project and uh, just writing some, I wouldn't say generic, but it was just some, some mediocre stuff, you know, rise and fall, at least that kind of thing. And then just to get them an idea that I could do this stuff with them. And then I dove deep hard into the aliens. And I was like, listen, I showed them my video. I showed them the experience. Like they, they completely supported this. And I, I explained to them, I was like, this is the only way I'm going to be able to tell my story now. As if I do this, I can tell it right to people's faces and they won't blink an eye because they think it's theatrical. So <laughs> it's like, okay, and that's, that, that was to, to alleviate the pressure and the weight for me. That was my outlet to, to get my story out, regardless if anyone even read between the lines or read in the lyrics. You know, uh, the one song in specific was on the first EP called Shadows. It's almost word for word. You know, the, the, the crows are swarming above my head, the parasites digging inside of my chest. Like it, it was point, I, I put it right out in plain sight, you know, and it, it was funny because when we started portraying ourselves more alien and, you know, it, it became, you know, talk to me about your experiences after the show, or if you want to know more, meet me after the show people started coming and following up. I want to tell you about the experience I had at Moon Lake, you know, or, or uh, okay. you know, down in Venice or in Perry, you know, I saw the swamp thing, you know, this little, little stories. I'm like, okay, I'm starting to see this community build, you know, and we're not really too much of a, of, of an out there in public band anymore because we all had our own lives. We, I mean, I had, we had kids. We're still online uh, posting, you know, new songs and, you know, always adapting and, and evolving. We just re recently released Tombstone about a month or so ago. I don't know. It was Christmas. I think it was. Yeah. That had great response so far. Uh, it was more or less in that song, kind of touching on the nose and breaking the fourth wall of basically yelling right to our fans. Like, they're here, you know, it's in plain sight. Congress is discussing it. There's, there's a lot of things that are, that are going on in a time like this in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. Mortal Kombat two said it best. There's no knowledge that is not power. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Right back to uh, GameStop. I knew we were <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, I have a question though. Cause let's talk about the Congress. Cause we're going to have to jump in a minute. This is running over. Which is great. Okay. I but apologize. We'll have yeah, you back oh, no, that's time. We're, no, we're not fine. on a time limit. We just yeah. some, some um, of the notes don't like that. But. It's part one of the saga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. part one. Exactly. So my question for you is, what was it like? Two questions, actually. I have two. First one is, what was it like? As, did you watch the congressional hearings? I had it on C-SPAN. Yeah, I, I literally, instead of watching it on YouTube where I think it can get filtered or exactly. anything like that. I mean, of course, the, the TV is, is going to filter some stuff out. Everything says it's live, but it's, you know, a three minute delay or whatever the case. Uh, just one example. But yeah, I, I literally watched the entire like three hour. I try to get as many clips, even on, and, and sadly, TikTok's become a resource. It even, is what it is. I, I take everything at face value. I believe, you know, half of what I see and none of what I hear really uh and that's always really stuck out to me I, I forget who quoted that but uh, i i tried to watch it and it's just like man i see a lot of puppets i see i see a lot of shoulder shrugs and eyes widening and like hmm and that's what it's supposed to be it's smoke and mirrors you know uh, it's it's a lot of this going on make people think that like, disclosure is really happening while we have proxy wars and all those other things going on. It, it's just I don't want to dive too deep in that because Spoken Mirrors is really, really popular right now when it comes to the media, whether it be fake news, AI generated conversations that never happened. We're falling into this, in, into this next phase, in my opinion, of nothing's going to be real anymore. With the, with the whole AI reface app stuff, I feel like that's going to be utilized in an aspect to kind of manipulate more of the media or more of the more society to kind of, you know, it's, there, there's there's so many pieces to this puzzle, but it all leads back to aliens. It, it's weird how every time I've tried to figure this something out or go down the iceberg and it all shrinks down to the Anunnaki and these reptilians and the Traconian race and, you know, uh, the Masons. And it's just crazy. There's, there's it's, so it's much. It's crazy how it, it is a kind of a reverse <laughs> pyramid. And you're just like, mm -hmm. wait a minute, this 
It all filters to uh, uh, some books that got edited out of the Bible. Come on. Right. And yeah, you, yeah, you got the book of Enoch that, you know, a lot of people don't even really know about, you know, yeah, it's a lot like, of people okay. don't know the Apocrypha and stuff like that. That's something for another day. We'll absolutely. To, we'll, absolutely. We'll do our deep dives into that. So. <laughs> yeah. I was just shining I a guess. little bit of my historical knowledge. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So yeah, we're, we're going to, we're going to chat Adam. We're going to be, we'll, we'll be doing some chats. Sounds good, good Mark. Yes. Okay. Right. So my other final question, and then we can do shameless self-promotion is this. <laughs> And I don't want to open Pandora's box, so this question might lead to us going, we're going to have a part two with Adam very soon. Have you had anyone talk to you outside of your friend that is, and these people right in your hemisphere that have had the same situation occur? Absolutely. Especially, okay. this, uh, um, specifically the parasites under the skin and the crows. Like those, those two, they were like, oh my gosh, I saw something like this happen, and I felt something in my skin as well. And that was just, just a, a YouTube thread comment. I, I believe it was either on Disclose TV's one because he had two profiles. Uh, so he had to repost one. So the original, all those comments, I think, got lost. And that was when people were kind of explaining the story. It was a lot less of the, oh, that guy's a crackhead, you know, blah, blah, it's Florida, Florida man, it added again, you know. It, and then it was more of like, oh my gosh, this is terrifying. You know, I, I was there when this happened. I saw the crows, you know, I, which is just relates more to that reassurance. But to circle back to your to your question that, that I not to me personally, but I've seen it to where they have posted about it or I've come across similar stuff. And, and either like it's hard to really believe much of Reddit. But, you know, I've, I've done my digging, you know, just in Google and I've reached out to multiple people, like even Giorgio Sucalis. Like I, I was, I was hey. stretching. I, I'm just like, please oh, listen Giorgio. to this. Hopefully, this will help. You know, just any anyone I could really kind of get it to at one point. Uh, and and th that was years ago when I tried that. I got, of course, a lot of no responses and things. You know, yeah. so this is this is just hoping, hoping that someone else that listens to this comes forward. And I'm sure they will. I, I can guarantee it. And then, like I said, we've we've got friends. We'll get we'll get you out there. We'll 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 get it spread. Now, uh, if I yeah. start seeing more and more Bright House or Spectrum bands pull up, because I know they're never, they, you know, <laughs> that was happening to me around that time. Is is you'll never see two Spectrum bands at once. No, but when they're together, no. one of them's a surveillance band. You know, it, it was little things I was starting to learn of, you know, just. I don't know, kind of creeping into the men in black watch, kind of, watch kind of thing. Watch for new Wi-Fi hotspots that pop up. Absolutely. Years. That's always the fun things. Well, Adam, thank you so much for sharing. And we have thank so much guys. more to go. We will definitely have you back very soon. It was very um, fun. Yeah, I, I, people, I appreciated the anxiety. <laughs> we'll give a few weeks to let people catch up and respond. And then maybe we'll we'll bring you back in a month or so. And and we'll do part two. So uh, Sounds but, good. Uh, Again, thank you so much. What an amazing story. And you are an amazing man for going through all this and coming out on the other side. Thank you and so much. Man. That's, that's incredible. That. So let's talk a little bit, you know, shameless self-promotion. Let's, if somebody wants to you know, follow you or, you know, cyber stalk you, we don't want that, but you know, <laughs> not again, um, at least. <laughs> let's say they want to get some of the band songs, man. I want to, I want to hear more of the music. So where, where do they find you? Uh, well, Prepare the Grave is available on Spotify, uh, iTunes. We pretty much distributed it through uh distro kids so you can see that on youtube pretty much anywhere you can find it on tiktok instagram we we pretty much spread across as many platforms as we could with uh with prepare the grave mainly spotify but as far as music video goes videos go which there's a alien abduction music video uh called for, for humanity handover which uh was basically the representation of uh the agreement between the treaty of, of the grays and uh the government you know you can abduct our people but you got to give us fiber optics and it, it just went down that you know right up front Love you know it. It, we came right out the gate with just like your government's lying to you you know the truth will shatter your faith which it will i mean when this truth comes up that's why it hasn't been disclosed it will literally break religion it will it will crush everything we've ever thought about and it will shatter our society in a good way it, it, like i mean which is kind of the way we're already going i keep ranting i'm sorry that's all right the grave <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah prepare the grave um we're, we're still trying to put out some more music but like i said it's 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 not a super big priority for all of us but it's more of like a fun thing to do now when when we get the chance i know we do have another conceptual ep uh theatrical thing coming up where it goes into the five phases of of contact so you have the song one it's you know the crop circles and stuff like that it's very 
laid out you know and, that, and now it's you know once i've already told my story it's starting it's it gives me the chance to now tell everyone else's That's so great. i start you know looking up things or i i've already have tons of different notes from when we had our street team grave crew uh, just people with experiences and that's that's how we engaged with our fans was just tell us what you like you know share a, a funny ufo meme or or anything like that you know it was it was really pop culture driven like for a band you know but still being able to just point blank tell people hey man this is my alien abduction you know story so <laughs> Yeah, you, you, if you do listen to Prepare the Grave, definitely look at the lyrics because it is, I mean, of course it's metal. You're going to, I don't know, that's it, not everyone will be a fan of the screaming and everything like that. I do sing in it though. Um, <laughs> I do screaming and singing. So th there's a little bit of pleasantness, but there is, there is, uh, it's kind of like, uh, what is that guy who does X-Files? Not Chris Carter. Is it Chris Carter? Yeah. Chris Carter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cool. I was thinking Dick Wolf for Law and Order. Uh, but, no, no. Uh, no, that's Chris Carter. Yeah, that, was, how he yeah. how he subliminally like puts in accurate episodes, but then he'll throw in like some weird like goofy one just to kind of throw off his main plot that he's hiding in his timeline. I always thought X Files had that hidden. They did that know. really well. So. Yeah, they did. Yeah, you because know, he was getting way too close to the truth, so they would, you oh. know, <laughs> let him know, like. <laughs> you just slow your roll buddy oh. i haven't i haven't had that yet thankfully oh um, good good well who knows what might happen after this so but uh yeah. <laughs> all right so we will bo will uh get all your information and she'll put all those in our show notes you got so it. that'll be fantastic and we will have you back very soon Sounds and good. um erica anything you want to say before i wrap it up Nope, I am broken for today. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. I'm going to go re-listen no to this episode like 10 times and again, not sleep for a very long time. So that that's that for me. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, no, it's all good, man. That's And that area, I just love that it was our old neighborhood too. So that was yeah. uh, our old stomping ground. So, so but, you, know, uh, you guys know exactly the locations I'm talking about too. That's, oh, 100%. 100%. So, I ran a haunted house in St. Pete for 30 years and nice. you know I knew all that stuff. So all I've right. probably been through that too. I mean, <laughs> you might have been. Help me cemetery. That was me. Yeah, so, but uh, that's awesome. Anyway, gang, uh, thank you all so much for listening. And we, this is just the first taste of uh, Adam's adventures here. We will definitely be speaking back with him again. Uh, for yes. those of you who. Thank you, you know, travelers. <laughs> yes, thank you, travelers. Hopefully you like, share, subscribe, spread the word. If you have had a similar experience or want to you know, reach out to me or reach out to us so we can get it to Adam, we are happy to do that. If you want to reach out to Adam himself, you know, look for his band. And um, you know, I'm sure he'd love to hear what you've got to say. But also filter it through us. We're happy to talk to you. If you want to come on and discuss your experience, eerietravels.com. There's a contact us page. Go straight to us. And we'd love to hear your stories. Uh, as for that, our Patreons also uh, talk about experiences on our uh, our Discord. So we love that. And, you know, that's immediate satisfaction there. So please go there and subscribe. Also, ParanormalityMagazine.com. If you go to ParanormalityMag.com and uh, go vote for us for one of the top 10 podcasts, we'd love to be, we love to be up on that top 10. And if you order any magazines from there, use the code TRAVELS, get yourself 10% off. Uh, we appreciate it and lets them know that you're listening to us. Please support our sponsors, as always. And gang, with that said, I'm just going to say, when you're traveling the roads of uh, Tampa Bay and you see some crows doing some things that they probably shouldn't be, it's not an Alfred Hitchcock movie. It's something that you are experiencing. So get your phone out and do your best and do what you can. And then if worst case scenario, you feel something inside and you need to get it out of there, the Taco Bell is right at the corner of Tyrone. And we will see you on the other side.